I've been playing Fallout 4 for years. I've played without mods, I've played with mods, I've played without mods again. And one of the reasons I love this game so much is that there are dozens of ways to play it. Dozens! Like Skyrim, Fallout 4 has a special perk tree that allows players to create different builds or different ways of playing the game. If you want to play as a sniper, picking off enemies from far away, you'll probably opt for the sniper and sneak attack perks. If you'd rather inflict carnage and chaos up close and personal, you're looking at big leagues and blitz. Or maybe you don't want to rely on vats at all, and would rather intimidate your enemies into an easy surrender kill, gunning down everyone who doesn't fall for it, making intimidation and commando the right choice. It's entirely up to you. No funny business. I heard you. Let's just stay calm. I am calm. What is it with you people? Each playthrough of Fallout 4 is different depending on the perks you pick, but you only get a perk every time you level up, making perk points incredibly rare in the mid to late game. This means the decisions you make in the perk tree at the beginning of your playthrough impact everything you do for the rest of the game. And as already demonstrated, most builds require investment in multiple perks from different special stats to really maximize the build's potential. Good VAT snipers will want to invest in both perception and agility for sniper perks as well as sneak or silencer perks. Prolific power armor users will need to spec heavily into both strength and intelligence to get the best power armor perks found at the very bottom of the perk chart. If you want to run the spray and pray, what? On top of getting all 5 ranks of commando in the agility line, you'll also want to get at least 5 perception to pick up the 5 ranks of demolitions expert, maximizing the explosive damage from the weapon as well. And furthermore, every perk has multiple levels, meaning if you want your punches to paralyze people on critical hits, not only do you need to be level 46, you also need to dump 5 points in total in this one perk to make that happen. Suffice it to say, perk investment in Fallout 4 is incredibly expensive. What did it cost? Everything. There's a huge cost associated with specking into the wrong perks early on, and that means that there are plenty of perks that no one will ever choose, no matter how far into the game they get. Looking at you, Lead Belly. Now this perk system is both genius and terrible. Let me explain. On the one hand, picking your perks becomes a huge aspect of the game. The rarity and high value of perk points activates the autistic part of everyone's brain that wants to maximize efficiency and enjoyment from every single perk selection. Many of the most autistic Fallout players, myself included, plan out the perks we're going to choose and when we are going to choose them well before even creating a new character. I mean, there are whole websites dedicated to Fallout 4 character planning, and I personally put more time into planning out my next character than I put into planning my own diet. Also, picking perk points becomes the ultimate method of character customization. Your perk choices help determine who you are in the wasteland, what your strengths and weaknesses are, whether you're moral or immoral, and even what motivates you. There are huge opportunity costs to every perk, and each selection necessarily excludes or at the very least delays a different method of playing the game, making perk selections both matter a great deal and feel very fun. But here's why this system's greatest strengths can also be its greatest weaknesses as it is incredibly costly to change. So whatever route you choose, you better really like it, because that's the way you're going to play for the vast majority of the playthrough. I'm dug in, and I'll never change. This can lead to the game getting stale. If you made yourself a VAT sniper build, it's only a matter of time before you get bored of clicking on heads and watching them explode. If you're a blitzing baseball bat wielding maniac, even smacking dudes into the stratosphere will eventually lose its novelty. Go board it. That was a lie. It's usually around level 30 or 40 where lots of Fallout veterans start daydreaming about playing the game with a different approach. But they're too far into the game to change the route their character is on, so instead they just start a whole new character with a different special build so they can opt into different perks. Essentially, without considerable time investment, Fallout 4's perk system forces the player to become a one-trick pony. And even if that trick is a really good one, you'll still get bored after playing the same card 200 hands in a row. Unless, of course, if that card is the one that this video is about. Now that I've laid out the background for how Fallout 4 perk selection works, and why the game is incredibly fun but also eventually boring, Hopefully there's a bunch of you Fallout 4 enjoyers out there thinking to yourselves, wow, that's exactly what it's like to play this game. This guy put what I was feeling into words. And if that's you, please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe.
It helps me out a lot and shows me that I should keep making videos. Now that you've done that, it's time for me to tell you about the one Fallout 4 build that never ever gets boring. It's a build that I call the Adrenaline Junkie. This build is so much fun and changes so much of the game that my current character is level 200 and I haven't even rescued Nick Valentine yet, or gone to Far Harbor, or Nuka World. Yes, that's right, I am a level 200 character that has not finished the first act of the game because this build is so much fun to play. And the best part is that the build only requires heavy investment into one perk, Nerd Rage. No 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 It's not at all what you think it Now some of the more experienced Fallout players know that on paper Nerd Rage isn't that good. It requires 10 intelligence and only activates when the player is below 20% health. When it does activate, the game goes into slow motion for a brief period of time, and at the final rank, the player does 40% more damage, gains 40 damage resistance, and recovers a small amount of health for every kill. These buffs are good while they last, but ideally won't need to be activated very often. For normal playthroughs, the perk is basically an incredibly expensive get out of jail free card that doesn't even ensure you'll get out of jail. So why do I like this perk so much? Well, it's because there's one legendary effect for armor that changes Nerd Rage from a so-so perk that really shouldn't ever be picked for players that are trying to maximize the efficiency of their perk choices to literally the best perk in the game. That legendary effect is, of course, the Safe Crackers legendary, no, the Unyielding Legendary Effect. Get back in the trash where you belong, Safe Crackers. Unyielding is an effect that adds plus 3 to all special stats except endurance when your character is below 25% health. If you're wearing unyielding armor and keeping your character's health below 25%, suddenly the cutoff for Nerd Rage to activate is less than 5% of your health bar instead of 80%. This means that with the low health necessitated by wearing unyielding armor, Nerd Rage's benefits are constantly a few bullet hits away at most. This changes Nerd Rage from being a perk that activates once in a blue moon to a perk that activates multiple times a fight, every fight. What's even better is that Nerd Rage's buffs don't go away when the slow motion ends. They only go away once you get back above 20% health. If you want to, you can use radiation to bring your health permanently below 20% and then always do 40% more damage with every weapon. That is basically the same effect as getting the first two perks of Iron Fist, Big Leagues, Heavy Gunner, Basher, Rifleman, Demolitions Expert, Gunslinger, and Commando. It's the value of 16 perks for the price of 3. But I'm not done yet! Which means that every perk point spent on Nerd Rage is doing the same work as 5 perk points spent on the specific damage perks. No, that's a lot of damage! What's, What's even, even better, better is that you don't need to keep your health below 20%. If you wear something that gives you endurance, like Kate's corset, don't judge me, and then get your health below 25% with radiation to get the effects of your unyielding armor, in order to activate Nerd Rage, all you need to do is swap the clothing that gives you endurance with anything else. Your health will dip below 20%, Nerd Rage will activate, and you can use the slow motion and damage buffs to get a major advantage at the beginning of a fight, or end a fight before it even begins. Then switch back to your endurance clothing and all of your health will be back. If you want, you don't even have to chance the lower health. You can swap the clothing and swap back before exiting out of the pit boy just to activate the slow motion. And you can even do this with hotkeys, meaning you have unlimited slow motion available for no cost at the press of a button. <laughs> Thank you.
What makes this build so great is that it synergizes with and increases the viability of every other build. Let's say you're running the Adrenaline Junkie build, meaning you have Nerd Rage and an unyielding armor piece and are keeping your health below 25%, but you have also gone into Commando and Gunslinger, so automatic weapons and pistols are your bread and butter. You're generally staying away from anything big with the scope on it. If you find an amazing legendary weapon for a sniper build, there is nothing stopping you from still using it. Activate Nerd Rage from a distance just by taking off a piece of Endurance clothing. Use the slow motion and the new sniper to initiate a fight, and then put the clothing back on, get your health back, and clean up with your trusty machine gun. Nice. If you're getting tired of using guns and you just found an amazing legendary weapon for a melee build, but you don't have any perk points in big leagues, you're still getting a 40% damage buff and the unyielding armor is also giving you plus 3 strength, which equates to another 30% damage increase for melee and unarmed weapons. That means even with no perk points invested in big leagues, you are almost doing the same damage as if you had 4 perk points invested in big leagues. They say that a jack of all trades is a master of none, but the Adrenaline Junkie build allows you to become a master of everything. Through readiness and discipline, we are masters of our fate. You might call that notion ironic. What's even better is that the build demands high intelligence to begin then adds another plus 3 intelligence with the unyielding armor. If you put the special book into intelligence, pick up the intelligence bobblehead, and buy the destroyer's helmet from Penny and Covenant, you have 16 intelligence all the time, corresponding to an increase in XP gain of 148%. With two pieces of unyielding armor, it's 157%, and with three pieces, it's 166%. More intelligence means you'll level up faster and have more perk points to spend sooner, making this build even more synergistic with all other builds. Suddenly, if you want to radically change your playstyle, you don't have to restart the game with a new character. That other playstyle is already viable with your damage buffs, and you can make it even better with the perk points you'll get from the intelligence buffs. Speaking of synergy, the increase in the other special stats from the unyielding armor gives benefits to the player that are beneficial to literally every playstyle. Higher strength means you'll do more damage with melee weapons and be able to carry more weight. Higher perception means you'll have better accuracy and fats. Higher charisma means better prices and better chances at convincing others. I already went over the huge benefits to higher intelligence. Higher agility means better sneaking and more action points to spend, meaning you'll be able to select more targets and vats, sprint longer, and use power attacks more frequently. And higher luck means you'll get critical shots to use more often. Using this build is a win 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 win. It's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. And I'll say no it isn't. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. We're gonna win more. Believe it or not, I've only covered about half of the benefits of using this build. Not only does the Adrenaline Junkie synergize with and increase the viability of all other builds, it also drastically improves certain companion perks, unique items, legendary effects, quest perks, and even the viability of special perks that are almost never chosen. Some companions that are so-so or not that good under normal circumstances shoot up to having the best companion perks in the game, bar none. The first is definitely Kate. Her companion perk, acquired after reaching full affinity with her, is called Trigger Rush and increases action point refreshment by 25% if your health is below 25%. With the Adrenaline Junkie build, your health is always below 25%. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry. So that's just a flat 25% increase to action point regeneration, which is a huge amount. Pair this with Action Boy and your action points regenerate twice as fast. Likewise, Strong's Berserk which increases the player's melee damage by 20% if they have 25% or less hit points, just becomes a flat 20% damage increase for all melee weapons. With Strong's perk and one piece of unyielding armor, you are hitting a constant 50% increase in damage with melee weapons. With Nerd Rage active, that's a 90% increase in damage with no perk points spent on melee weapons. And under a normal playstyle, Hancock's perk Isodoped is the worst in the game. It requires that the player take on an insane amount of radiation for a small buff to the rate your critical meter fills. But as an adrenaline junkie, Hancock's perk is still really bad. But at least it's always active. The Adrenaline Junkie build also flips the unique items tier list on its head. Watch any ranking video for Fallout 4's unique items and it's guaranteed that the Salvage to Saltron head is at the bottom of the list. 
No matter who you ask, it's pretty universally agreed that this gun is one of the worst in the game. But if you're running the Adrenaline Junkie, the Salvaged Assaultron Head suddenly becomes one of the best unique items and a must have for your inventory. And not because it's good at dealing damage, but because it's a portable source of radiation. See, one of the biggest challenges of the Adrenaline Junkie is keeping your rads high enough that you are getting the benefits of wearing your unyielding armor, but not so high that your heartbeat is constantly ringing in your ears, because that's super annoying. You need your health to be below 25%, but above around 18%, which is a very thin needle to thread. And you're going to take radiation damage periodically in the wasteland just as a fact of playing the game. Eventually, that rad damage builds up enough that your health is so critically low that you need to see a doctor or pop a rat away. When carrying the salvaged Celtron head, you don't need to go find a radiation source to get back all your buffs. You can just shoot the gun a few times and get all your radiation damage back. Using this build also drastically improves the viability of the Inquisitor's Cowl from Far Harbor. Since you already have the rad damage, there's no reason not to rock this helmet and get an even crazier buff of plus 4 to your intelligence. But it's not just unique items, legendary items are affected too. Under a more traditional playstyle, legendary armor with a rad powered effect is typically not very sought after. But using this build, again, this armor just has a huge benefit with no further downside other than those already explicitly involved in the build. With radiation taking up 75% of the health bar, a single piece of rad powered armor provides a huge plus 5 buff to strength, increasing carry weight by 50 pounds and melee damage by 50%. Likewise, every perk from completing the Far Harbor DLC also receives a huge buff, with the best probably being the Crusader of Adam perk, which increases the player's damage based on the amount of radiation they have. And as you've probably realized, that's one of the basic themes of this build. Every perk, legendary effect, or item that relies on radiation suddenly becomes incredibly good, because you're already eating the downside at the very onset of the build. This playstyle opens up so many new ways to experience the game that most players have never tried because we generally try to avoid radiation like the plague. And as I've already mentioned, it makes perks that are usually a waste of points finally have a purpose. For example, I've picked up the rad resistant perks just because I was sick of having the perfect amount of radiation and then hitting random pockets of radiation in the wasteland and suddenly needing to see a doctor or use a rat away because now my health is low enough to constantly hear my own heartbeat ringing in my ears. It's a funny balancing act to constantly be trying to keep your radiation levels just right, but it's also a fun new mechanic that you need to plan ahead for and manage, just like hunger, thirst, or tiredness. Okay, I've spent a long time now talking about the upsides of this build, so let's get into the downsides. First, and most obviously, you only have a quarter of your max health at any given time, so you probably shouldn't run into situations guns blazing like an action hero. You have to play tactically and with strategy, which to me just makes the game more fun anyways. Or, as mentioned before, you can run straight into the heat of battle and roll the dice, hoping that the slow motion, increased damage, and increased resistances will save you. It's entirely up to you. The second biggest drawback of this build is that it really nerfs the most relied upon aspects of power armor. If you have a couple pieces of unyielding armor and you step into a power armor suit, all the benefits immediately disappear. Of course, you still get the benefits of power armor, namely 11 strength, incredibly high damage resistances, and whatever mods you've crafted onto the suits, but I find that my character is actually much less powerful in the armor. To wear power armor is to basically sacrifice my carry weight, damage, sneak, and vats bonuses for some very high damage protection. Just to show you what I mean, here are what my special stats look like in power armor versus out of it. Keep in mind that my character is also addicted to alcohol and nearly every drug in the game. Julian. However, like in other places, using this playstyle doesn't completely nullify power armor, instead it opens up a whole new way of using it that most players would never utilize. Here I'm talking about the Emergency Protocols Torso mod paired with Overdrive Servos on the legs. Emergency Protocols increases your movement speed by 25% and reduces your damage by 50% when your health is below 20%. Of course, if you're wearing a piece of clothing that gives you plus 1 endurance and your health is around 25%, as soon as you step into power armor, that plus plus one endurance is removed, and your health immediately drops to under 20%, activating the emergency protocols without needing to take any damage. 
Stepping back out of the power armor will give you back the plus one endurance and return your health to its 25% level. Overdrive servos increase your sprint speed by 15% per leg at a cost of increasing AP drain by 15% as well. If you have emergency protocols installed on your torso, overdrive servos on each leg, and you have Kate's aforementioned Trigger Rush companion perk, you're looking at a 55% sprint speed increase for a 5% increase in AP drain. This means you just turned your set of power armor into the fastest form of Commonwealth transportation that's not straight up teleportation. The Brotherhood Vertibird might be faster for flying across the entire Commonwealth, but for anything that's only half of the distance of the map away or less, I think it's much faster to sprint there in power armor rather than wait for a Vertibird to arrive, land, take off, and land again. The way I utilize this in my current playthrough is by trying to keep an Emergency Protocol's double overdrive set of power armor in each major settlement where I've built a Minuteman fort, allowing me to hustle to the other side of the map when I'm getting attacked. Don't you worry little baby settlers, daddy's coming, daddy's coming and he cares about your safety! There is so much to this build and it changes how you play this game to such a great extent that I could spend hours explaining it in even greater detail. But I think I'm going to leave it here and allow all of you to experience the build for yourselves. The major takeaways are that the Adrenaline Junkie build synergizes with every playstyle, and as long as you start the game with high intelligence, you can transform any build into the Adrenaline Junkie if you do end up finding those unyielding armor pieces. Playing as the Adrenaline Junkie also elevates different parts of the game from being generally unpicked features that are obviously outclassed by other choices to being incredibly helpful and important. I mean, when have you ever chosen emergency protocols over the jetpack? That's the beauty of this build. It changes how you play Fallout 4 drastically and changes the lenses you use to analyze and understand the entire game. In a sense, this build flips the entire Fallout 4 meta on its head and makes the game so much more complicated and multifaceted than I originally thought. Which is an incredibly fun and satisfying thing to discover with a game that received its last update 9 years ago. Alright, that's it from me. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm still a small channel, so I respond to most comments, especially if they're funny. Thanks for watching, be sure to check out my other content, and peace out.